Hey there, this is Red. It's time for a Red unboxing. And this is a little bit odd in the unboxing in that some of this is already unboxed. So what I've got here is I am a huge Thunderstone fan. And my Thunderstone Quest, one of my Kickstarter pieces, recently came in. So Quest Expansion 8 and 9 just got delivered. Um, and really in one box all the pieces came and then I had as an addition because all of this stuff is going to fit in my big boxes of Thunderstone Quest. I also asked for the box themselves that these expansions would come in. So I got the box but all these pieces arrived outside the box. So if we take a look at the box we've got Vengeful Sands here which is expansion number eight um, and it's really pretty looking designs nice. Um, and they have a nice uh, plastic. If you don't have the big box, they have a nice way to store your cards inside there. Right? And that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'll have no idea how well it will actually work because my cards won't go in there. But it's very nice packaging there, I think. So if you're buying this off the shelf, I think this will be a really good box set to grab a hold of. Um, nice wrap. So what's coming in this box set? You're going to get uh, your rule book here. And it's going to detail all the things. It's going to give you some insight. There's some common things um, that if you got the base set and then there's other things that you would see other in other expansions. So they talk about like allies and some of the guardians that work with the barricades mode where you can solo and they've got the prestige class. Depending upon what you have or have not picked up, some of these things may or may not apply. So if you've got the big, if you've got all the pieces, all of this stuff's going to work. But um, depending upon... If you haven't got certain pieces, then you might not have barricades mode, right? Okay, so Questbook talks about all of these pieces. So let's go through what pieces we've got. So the ones that are out already, let's talk about those first. So let's talk about, uh, let's go, let's start here with our prestige classes. So one of the prestige classes that comes with this is the Voyager. So if we look at the Voyager here, the Voyager has this spoils thing where they can go on a voyage, right? Which is kind of cool because... If you then go down the different things that they can do, they have a, so if you voyage, then you can get these and you succeed by rolling on a D6 lower than a monster's level, you get these perks, right? But as you go further and further down, your perks get better if you're able to do that. And there are certain things that you can do to improve your chance to do that. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of like uh, going off on a, on a quest, right? Then the other one that they have is called the Spice Merchant. And the Spice Merchant looks really, really heavy on the doing commerce. So um, there's abilities here to, well, weapons cost more, items cost less. You have some village abilities to help you get things in the village. Um, all sorts of really nice village abilities there. So if you're if you kind of like to play around in the village in a little bit less dungeon, that might be a really good way to go. So some some pretty cool little prestige classes here and a couple that look like they take you really outside the, the basic parts of the game. So those look neat. I'm kind of kind of happy with those. Um, the other thing is if you're playing barricades in solo mode, you've got a new boss to fight. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at what she's got. She's got a Scarab Swarm. Actually, hold on. Yeah. All right. So she's got a Scarab Swarm you have to deal with, uh, which is add three. You may destroy up to three gear orc tokens, removing one for each token destroyed. She's got a drain life and a negative energy. Um, each turn before placing champions, each player rolls a die. Start level indicates. That's standard. Advanced threat token, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty normal. All right, uh, and then when she comes out, her big bad thing there is uh, she's got 13, and ooh, she's got three poison, yuck. The poisoner disease, I can't remember at this point in time, but that's, that's nasty. It's going to take four light to get to her. Yeah, she's going to look, she's going to look pretty tough there. Um, so she's still got her drain life and her scarab swarm and her negative energy going on. So pretty nice little villain. So let's toss her out to the side here. Let's look at our dungeon rooms. So these are ones that everybody will be playing with. So the first one we got up here is our merchant caravans. We got one light. 
um, as an additional spoils. Gain gold equal to the amount your attack value exceeded the monsters. Buy one card from the marketplace. So that's pretty cool. That's your, your overkill and shop. I like that. Next up, we've got the Dragon Blood Forest, which is going to make your monster a little bit tougher. And your avian and bow cards have plus one. So it looks like it's a good spot to do your ranged attack at. All right, then we have, we step into our level twos and we've got the Naga Nest. So we're looking at Nagas in this expansion. After you move out of this room, unless you have two or more fighters, take a wound. And it gives you a bread. So really there's a passing through. This is not going to be an easy one, right? All right, then we have the Oasis, which is minus one experience with the star. So it says up there, plus one experience per torch you have to a maximum of three. Well, that's kind of nice, but it starts at minus one. So it looks like um, at three, then you would be plus three minus one. So you get up to a maximum of minus two or plus two. Sorry, it's kind of interesting. Uh, refill this room face down. Turn this room's monster face up before a battle here. If it's not defeated, put it at the bottom of its deck. Oh, okay. So this, this is one of the types of rooms that my wife hates. So um, she likes to know what's in the room before coming at it. She doesn't like the randomness factor, right? So for the people that like that aspect of the game, this will be a great room. People that like Epic Thunderstone, like a little bit of variety and some chance and a little bit more of that kind of a Meritrashy thing going on and less of the Euro planning style. This is going to be a room for you. All right. Number three, we've got the Royal Tomb, which can take three light to get into, which is pretty hectic hard at the, uh, the base level there, but it's got two treasure, which is awesome. So after each time you gain a treasure cache, gain an additional, looks like a one experience. So it's going to make your treasure caches better. So what do we got there? We got a before battle, destroy a one plus hero. Ouch, so you're losing a hero. Um, and then after battle, place your champions back in the zero rooms. That's pretty standard and you're taking another wound. So actually that one doesn't look all that horrible. The The light requirement's a bit rough, but the uh, two, two treasures pretty nice to destroy a hero. If you've got cards to counteract that, that's not too horrible, but that that that's, that can be rough. Um, it might be a good way to get rid of some of your lower level heroes late in the game, though. All right, so let's look at the Chalk Desert. There's too light to get into, so it's a little bit easier. We don't see anything over here on the right side. On the left side, you get your after battle. Instead of dropping back all the way to zero, you're going to drop back to two, which is kind of interesting because um, that could set you up for another round to potentially get back into the level three room so you don't have to progress all the way through them. So I kind of like that, actually. That's kind of neat. All right. So there's our rooms. We got our ones, twos, and threes out of the way. Um, book rooms are villain. I've been playing too much Marvel Champions, so let's you know, think of these as villains at this point. Um, now we have our cards. So let's open some cards up. So we've got deck one here. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Get my knife out here. A ripper open. And let's see here. Crinkle, crinkle. All right. So how do we want to do this? Let's, uh, we'll drop it on the side here. Can I fit it all under the camera? It's going to be out of, well, that looks all right. All right. So let's see what the first thing we got is. We have scarabs. So it looks like some vermin there, right? Uh, Swarm has D6 for toughness. So they're going to get tough depending upon what you roll. Um, and another scarabs that looks the same as the first one. Let's see here. Are they all the same? Nope. They change up a little bit. So let's see. That one's got... Yeah, so the first two are the same. So you got two of the same, which is pretty standard, right? Uh, after battle, destroy gear token equal to or greater than this monster's. Eh. There's some nice bonuses there. You're going to take a wound, but you're going to get an experience and a treasure. Eh, that's all right. Um, that's ramping it up a little bit. So, ooh, ouch, that's a destroy 
your shards equal to half this monster's rounded down. So that's that's the kind of thing where it doesn't matter if you don't have any going in, but if you've got a nice cache of them, yeah, not gonna like that. And these again, these cards here that uh, have the randomness thing, this is stuff that my wife doesn't like uh, because you can't predict, you really, you tend to go in with more than what you need in order to feed them, right? It takes the predictability out of it. So uh, there's a chance you can fail, right? Uh, so there's one that's just the D6. We got a couple of those. We've got one that's when you move out of this room, unless you have a cleric, you're going to destroy one, and you get a light from that one. So that one's going to be tough just to pass through. Let's see. There's a, that one's going to give you three experience and a bread, but he starts with two, and then he's going to get a D6. So two of those. All right. So that's all of our scarabs. Now we're into our giant vermin. So we've got giant scorpion there. Uh, and he's got a poison in three experience. Four. He's pretty easy to kill, but uh, those poison stuff's a pain in the butt. Two of those. Uh, desert dogs. One in a D6. And if he has six or more, it's going to get even tougher. Wow. So if you roll six on that one, not only is he bad, he's going to be really bad. So that's a, a take your chances there. All right angry ostrich so you have to fight an ostrich now he looks pretty mean with those talons up in the air uh and five health is pretty good so destroy a bread token or take a wound so you're gonna take oof gonna give you a wound from that oh okay seven for level one so spiked lizard and two poison but he's gonna give you a treasure wow that's that's another beastly one for a level one monster all right Hydrodile. What the heck is that? That's the, oh, it's a cross between a hydra and a crocodile. Crazy. All right. Um, so when you move out of the room, you're going to take a wound. So if you just pass through it, you're going to get hurt. That's interesting. Uh, and then before and after battle, you're going to take a poison. Yuck. Boy, there's a, there's a lot of yucky monsters in here. All right. So now we're moving on to our level twos. So this looks like a demon and gen sand spirit so after you move into this room unless you have a rogue discard one of your items oof but you get a treasure seven and two that's pretty tough seven and one so it looks like these guys all have additional defenses versus magic so put one item in your discard pile on the top of the deck of one player to your left or right so they're going to be forcing, it looks like a lot of these are around forcing you to push cards around to your neighbors. So then you're discarding a weapon. Uh, the dog, what's the dog do here? Just put it to your left and right. Each choose and give you one item from their discard pile. Put the items on top of your deck. Hmm. Interesting. There's one that's just straight up annoying. So there we've got a... Uh, Gives you a treasure in six and two, so it's not a anti-magic one, so that's good. Four experience, that's pretty nice. It's just these two, these two disease ones are tough. Uh, let's see here. Namash. So Naga Nomads. The last ones, the last ones were Sand Spirit. So we're into a new one. These are the Nagas, which are a theme for this set, right? So these have a after battle. Only if you have a rogue or wizard. And then it could be before or after battle. Destroy an experience or destroy a weapon. Mm. All right. All right. So two of those guys. Sinosh. And he's got, if you have a cleric. So it looks like a lot of these are going to be based on you having a specific role. Yep. So there's a rogue. So you're going to want a well-rounded party, I guess, to go up against these guys because they're going to have a variety of effects that depend upon whether you have certain classes. So this might be a good set of uh, good set of heroes where you have the double heroes, like ones that are a combination warrior, cleric, and things like that to go out against. Now let's see here. That one's fighter or rogue. All right, so we're getting into the level threes. So this is the boss's minions, it looks like. So um, minus one for every full two. 
Okay, so that's good. So I was looking at that four, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. But you can knock it down. He's pretty tough. He's got 12, but he is a level three monster, and he's giving you eight XP. <laughs> I think it's reasonable for uh, four if you can knock it down with a torch. So that's okay. I'm all right with that. Uh, there's the queen. We have for each torch you have less than six, discard a random card. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, you're going to be wanting a lot of light fighting these guys. Uh, let's see here. This is another one that you can have five plus light. All right. Yikes. And there's two of those. We've got Dust Devils. Discard, spell or weapon, and discard to the left one hero if you cannot destroy these cards instead. All right. So there's your Dust Devil. There's three Dust Devils in there. Undead Cyclops. I like the art on that. That's kind of cool. And he's got 20 health. And again, well, so it's minus two for each light that you have. Again, light's going to take him out. But wow. There's three of those guys. Oof. Big guys. All right. So next set of monsters we have here are Arid Atrocities. Uh, minus two armor for each of her wielded bows. Okay, so bows will help take out the birds. It kind of makes sense. We have a manticore. Oh, and he's going to get a d6 bonus unless you have a bow. So it looks like uh, there's kind of a theme going here with the bows. Uh, and that's just a big guy. And he's not that big. Tin's not that bad for level three. All right. And he didn't have a bunch of like mean stuff either. So what's this guy got? This is uh, looks like some sort of sandworm thing. Uh, unless you move into this room, unless you have a rogue, destroy one ally or hero at random. Oh, I hate the stuff that does that at random. So you would definitely, for me, I would not want to go in there unless I had a rogue because I, I hate that randomness stuff. It always messes me up. All right. This one is a destroy an ally or a treasure card. Ooh, that's pretty rough. All right, so now we're back to what do we got here? Are these are our, I think these are our epic cards. So we've got a Beetle Bevy, Desert Dwellers, Sand Spirits. Are these our randomizers? Yeah, these are our randomizers. Sorry. So. Kind of going through all the randomizers for the different sets, right? So just to recap, these are the ones that are coming out in the set here. Actually, here, let me go and run through them again real fast. So you got your beetles, you got your desert dwellers, your sand spirits, your naga nomads, your amtifites. God, I'm not going to pronounce that right. Forces, undead forces. And then you've got some arid atrocities. All right, so those are our bad guys. And there we go. So let's talk about some heroes. I'm going to lay these out. Let's lay these out maybe right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. They all fit on the screen? Yeah, they're all on the screen. All right. So let's take a look at some heroes. So we've got Durigan Soulbrand at a level one. So, hey, he's a cleric wizard. So that kind of plays into the ones that need different classes he's going to fulfill two of them so i kind of like that so what do we got there he's doing two attack at level one which is awfully nice not very strong with two he doesn't have a whole lot of skill or whatever to wield things so discard a chaos spell or a potion token to heal one which may be in your discard pile so that's actually kind of nice i like that because this this uh set of stuff seems to be pretty heavy on those so it's nice to have some cleanup for that all right so actually here here's what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab all of him off of there and let's see here there's his level one here's his level two so level two we have uh we go up one we get villager spoils chaos spell or another hero at the bottom of your deck to heal one wound so that's kind of cool. And then let's see, here's our level three. Our level three is he's up to four and we're putting a chaos spell or another hero at the bottom of your deck and you can heal one or two wounds. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. And that's a village or a spoils. So that's a pretty cool combo. All right. So that's uh, 
Duragrim Soul Brand. All right, so let's take him. Where can I set him out? Where is he going to be visible at? He'll be visible. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, we'll scoot off to the side here, and we'll set him maybe right there. All right, so let's take a look at our next hero. Our next hero is uh, Reen Mandrux. Avian Elf Fighter, so not counting starter cards, Reen has plus one for each different keyword you have on other cards from the following, Ally, Hero, Item, Spell, Weapon. So this is another um, try to have a generalized deck card. So I like that, plus got four strength, so that's pretty good. I like that, so let's see what our level two does. So if you bump her up to level two, you're gonna go up one on the strength, um, plus one against gins, and then she's going to keep the same thing. Plus one for cards of the different types. So cool. And then what's our last one? Our last one is our level three. So ooh, so she went up one attack there. And now she's got four, plus two against gins, and plus one for each different type. So and she's going to have a lot of strength there. So. Um, good card for variety fighting and having a mixed deck. I, I like that one. I like that one. That one's uh, that allows you to kind of build on the, the variety theme is, instead of going strictly one set of cards. So I like it. All right. Next up, what do we got here? We have a... Is it all or Nope. All right. So next up is... Uh, Hema Granite Sunder. That's a Dorvan name, and it's a Dorvan fighter. There we go. Straight up, two attack, five strength. She's pretty tough. She's got, what is this, like a punching spike kind of thing. So that's a pretty good little fighter there. So what happens when you go to level two? Anything special? Because she doesn't really do anything special level one, although she is got good attack and got good strength. Level two, we get a dungeon ability, which is discard a card. To draw one card, the discarded card's effects no longer apply, such as the drawback from lanterns. Interesting. So uh, I guess you could get rid of diseases potentially or other things that hurt you. I, I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. All right. Um, what else do we have? At level three, you can get even stronger and hit harder. And draw a card, and you can discard a card to draw a card. Ooh, I really like that. So you potentially have two draws. I like that because sometimes you get those hands or you get useless cards in there, and this will let you cycle out the useless card for ideally something better. Or there's a lot of times where you get that card draw, and you're just like, oh, that did not help me at all. She can cycle that out and get you another chance at a decent card. So I really like her. She's pretty cool. Um, and she's got good strength and she hits pretty good, not like crazy good, but she hits pretty good for just being a straight up hero. So I like that one. I like the dwarf fighter. All right. So let's get these in order. And next I need to open up another pack of cards because, uh, I've got one here, but I definitely don't have the full stack of cards. So let's see what's in. Let's get stack number two here opened up. Uh, they've got a little peely thing on there to help you open them up, but it's not working for me. So I think we're gonna have to go with the knife again. Oh, wait, maybe I got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's get it. All right. There we go. So we're into... Oop, we're into set number two. Bum bum! Vinville Sands number two. All right. Let's see what we got here. We are now working on... A sailor. So this is. Do, do, let's get all of his cards. We're now working on Shakir the Sailor. So he's a uh, was he human rogue? And when you gain a treasure cache, gain an additional. I like that. I like that he also gives you a gold too, and he attacks for two right off the bat. So that's a, a nice little hero there. Now treasure caches. I've always been, it's been kind of debatable whether how useful those are. A lot of times I get them and I'm very disappointed, but you know, getting an extra experience out of them might be really helpful, make them a little bit better. I'm down with that. So what's the level two one do? So level two is gonna step you up, one on the attack. 
He can give you another strength. He's going to give you a hey, another gold. I like that. Make him useful in the city. Um, and then we have a one light if you have a treasure. After the first time each turn you gain a treasure, heal a wound. Oh, I like that. So he's getting into the monies kind of guy. All right, so we step him up and wow, four gold. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Um, four attack, not bad. So plus two if you have a treasure. Your treasures are worth plus one experience at the end. That's nice. So then as spoils, you can buy a treasure. Mmm. All right, he's good. I like him. I like that one. Uh, I, I like rogues that have a good value in the city. Um, and then I think that as you get towards end game, that will buy a treasure by paying cash ends up being really handy. All right. So next up we get into some bird looking dude. So who do we have here? Next we have Sirak. So he's an avian beast rogue. It's so not a lot of attack. He's a uh, one. He's got two, so he's not very strong, but he's worth one gold, so that's not too bad. And so after you buy a card from the marketplace, gain an experience. Oh, the, and he brings a light with him. That's nice. I like that. All right. I like that he, when you go shopping, he's making you money too. Or sorry, making you experience when you go shopping. So that with the couple of new prestige classes that are in here could end up being a, making a good marketplace combo. All right, so at level two, what happens is we're going to go up a gold, up attack, up a strength. And we have cards, including treasure cards, have minus two cost for you. Oh, that is cool. Um, and you can buy a village or gear token, and he's worth two light. So definitely not the big fighty type one, but he is really going to help you in the village. I, yes. Yes, yes. All right, so I was at level three because that's kind of crazy. So he's not doing much. Oh, that's another level two. Where's our level three? Oh, there it is. Level three. There we go. Level three. Villager spoils all players gain one or all players destroy one. Hmm. So he's still giving you two. You're going to get four gold, which is really nice. So it's like I talked about, it's really nice having gold. Four attack is a decent step up, but he's not getting that much more skill or strength isn't going up a whole lot. What do I think about that? I don't know that I like the level three better than the level two. I may have incentive to not level up to level three because I think... I like my village ability and my my cost saving ability on level two better than the level three. I don't know. Let me know what you think there. Would you would you probably keep him at level two or would you actually take him to level three? I think most of the time I'd probably keep him at level two unless I was worrying about uh, my XP at the end of the game. Then I might I might bump him up. But yeah, that's a tough call there. All right. So our last hero that we've got is. We have Shauna Hopesinger, so Halfling Rogue Wizard, another combo class. So one's all around, one magic, one skill, and one gold. All right, leveling up Shauna costs minus one for each copy of Shauna that you have. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. So that, that says go, go with a bunch of Shaunas. So what happens at level two? Level two, you've got um, monster abilities cannot discard or destroy her. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Kind of, huh? Huh? So this says go with a lot of Shauna at this point in time. Now she's not attacking for a whole lot, um, and village you're getting an, an extra experience, so that's helping you level her up into level twos. And she's a rogue wizard, so you're you're fulfilling a couple of those roles. So let's see, at level three, what do you got? She's going up to a three. Um, when you gain Shauna, gain a treasure. Nice. Uh, cards and room effects cannot destroy, discard or destroy Shauna. So you got monsters can't discard or destroy. And then when you get here, you've got card and room effects can't discard or destroy. 
and then village or spoils get a treasure so she's all about the monies at that point in time she's getting the bling hmm I don't know about that one interesting I don't know that I would play it I mean I think that would be one of those where if I'm playing multiplayer and somebody's going after other stuff I see everybody's like buying up other stuff. I might go after that one, but I don't think that's going to be my default hero to go after. Like, because it looks like you need to go deep in that hero and um, you kind of got a role. You need it. You need an ability that's going to be trying to take her out and discard her to really to make the most use out of her. So I don't know. That one's kind of iffy to me. Um, would, would be interesting. Opinions. What are your opinions on her? All right. So let's take a look at the loot what's the stuff that you're going to be able to get in the market so let's see our first thing is a bag of gems we got a bag of gems which is a item spoils buy a treasure card from the marketplace if you did and have an avian or halfling get a hit point back okay and village is gain an experience so it's it's also worth one at the end which is nice and it's got a value of four so um i like that I like that card. Would I buy that right off the bat? I don't know about that. So cost eight. It's kind of hefty. What I, yeah, I don't know. I think there's, so I guess looking at some of the other marketplace oriented characters that are here, this might be a good card to combo with them. Right. Especially. Yeah. So I can see where this combos with some of the characters that are part of this set. All right. What else do we got? We have a, we have spices. So spices are worth experience equal to the number of spices you have. And they give you a plus two skill for they're pretty cheap. So that's one of those nice sneaky cards that you grab a bunch of while nobody's paying attention. And they're like, how many, how did you get so much victory points at the end? Well, cause I invested in spices. So I like that one. I would like to see that as part of this, the one of the games that we play. All right, Thunderstone Potion. It's worth two. It's going to give you a couple of skill. Spoils. Destroy this card and one other card. Gain one card for zero cost from the marketplace. Oh, okay. Uh, so the tough part about that is you got to destroy it, but it's also it's worth one. So that makes it kind of tough to destroy. Cost of five. Hmm. I don't know. That's, again, that's kind of a questionable one for me. I don't know about that one. All right, what do we got here? We've got, so they've got some allies in this set. One of them's a camel. So let's see here. Your camel is going to give you a plus one on the skill. Villager dungeon. Destroy a bread token to give this card the static keyword. Static cards are not discarded when the turn ends. And while in play, do not count towards your maxed hand size. So that's kind of cool, and they're going to hang out and give you constant strength. And he's got a torch out there. So um, I think there is a there's a camel strategy, and I like the camel strategy. I think it can be a pretty powerful card. So I like the camel. Down with the camel. Static camels sounds good. All right. Next up, we've got a desert wolf. So, ooh, so he's going to let you, well, plus two attacks, pretty good. He's going to ignore effects from monsters. Well, you have an avian or desert wolf, you may ignore effects from dungeon rooms. Oh, I like that. So um, there were a lot of uh, problematic effects that we saw in the rooms and then on some of the monsters. So he's going to play well with the other cards in this set to help you get around them. So like it, like the wolf. I think he's going to be a little bit set specific, but or uh, depending upon what's going on, you're going to have to see what cards are out there and what monsters you're fighting against. But uh, could be extremely useful. Spell we've got mummify, chaos divine spell. So it starts at one, and then we have equal to your highest cleric. Spoils if you only resolve once, resolve again. Another spoils effect. Oh, so like our spoils effect to uh, get treasures, you could double up treasures or all sorts of healing stuff. Again, it's the right card in the right combo. By itself, it's kind of meh, but you got to find the right the right card to work that with. 
All right, what else do we have here? We have Navigate the Labyrinth is another spell. So another chaos spell, dungeon rooms require minus one light for you. You may destroy a shard or a potion to give one cleric or wizard the static keyword for this turn. Oh, cool. So you get your level two or three clerics and wizards and you can make them stick around. I like that. Uh, I think that's going to end up being a fairly powerful card. So at a cost of four and it's worth two at the end, that's a nice spell. I'm liking that one. Kudos for that spell. All right, what else do we got? We've got a open sesame. <laughs> uh, open sesame says uh, arcane chaos spell, one damage, uh, in the, and it gives a light. So it's got a little bit of dungeon utilization. It says in the village, we have a, after you complete the village phase, take a dungeon phase. You have a maximum light this turn equal to your highest wizard. So that's going to let you pop over. So village and then dungeon. So even with some of the dungeon oriented characters in, or the village oriented characters in here in classes, being able to pop out and do like potentially a one or two level room would be really nice and help you rack up the points. So, yep, I like that spell too. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got a full stack of our last one here, which is summon help. And for that, we've got a draw a zero hero and gain one light, or from the guild's quarter, draw one hero with skill lower, level lower than one of your wizards. Return the hero before the turn ends. Hmm. All right. That is another one that's... Wow, what am I thinking about that one? So... In a, in a late game... Problem is you start to run out of heroes that are decent or potentially lower than your wizard levels. Like somebody's bought up all of the twos and the ones that are left are crappy. So um, there is the draw a zero hero and gain a torch for the things in here that kill off heroes. That's going to give you a little, a little uh, sacrificial character, a meat shield or whatever you can bring with you. So I like that aspect of it. What I don't like is it doesn't really do anything for you in the village, which is kind of disappointing, but uh, that, it, that's going to be a very situational card yet again. So, All right, so we're going to get into our last stack of cards here. This is our set number three. And let's see what we got in here. So we've gone one, two, three. We got some weapons, so one of the favorite parts of the game. What do we got here? We got a bow. We saw a bunch of things that make use of a bow. So the avian bow here has, it's going to be easier to wield for avians, which is great because some of those avians we saw had like no strength. Uh, then you got dungeon, draw one card. So that's a, that's a nice little bow, plus two attack. Six cost isn't all that large, so I'm... I'm okay with that weapon. That would be an all right weapon. I would probably buy that one at that cost. All right. Ooh, this looks like a bigger weapon. So we've got the Kopesh and plus four. So it's going to take some serious strength to wield that one. There's serious skill, I guess. Um, five cost isn't that expensive. It's got two value at the end. So that's pretty good. Uh, the heroes that we saw, there's only a few of them that are going to get up into that seven range. So they're going to need to be augmented by some of the, like your camels or your, your potions or something to get them up there. But plus four is pretty good for a weapon. So I guess with your fighters, you can get some big beefy fighters and some big weapons, you'd be all right. But as we look over here on the side, like you've only got a couple of heroes that are really going to get up into that range that can wield that effectively. So that's a nice weapon though. I like it. All right, and then you got the scimitar, which looks like it's a step down, so it's only six to wield. And it's plus three. Um, and the dungeon give so you can make a monster a little bit tougher and get an extra shard off of that. I like that ability, and and it's worth two. So that uh, was the kopesh. The kopesh wasn't worth anything. Okay, so I like that weapon in preference to the kopesh. A little bit easier to wield. 
It's got value in the village. Having it be worth two gold is really nice. And that ability to um, make the monster to get extra XP potentially, or shards, I guess, uh, in the dungeon is pretty cool. So I, I would be highly likely to buy the scimitar there. That's looking like a nice weapon. All right, so now we've got some treasures. Let's see what we've got here. We've got uh, Huma, which uh, four attack before a dungeon. That's an ally, right? Yep, ally. Beast wizard hero. Before a dungeon room or monster discards or destroys Huma, put it on top of your deck instead. That's cool. Uh, we've got the Thunderstone Lamp. Village, get two shards. Dungeon, give one hero plus two to their printed values of a variety of things. So it's kind of a multi-purpose. That's just a handy treasure. It's not worth a whole lot in the end value-wise. It's only one, but uh, it, it does have... I like the choice there because you can morph it to what it is that you want it to do. So... Plus two to their printed vessels. So giving you plus two to all of those. Ooh, nice. Okay. All right. So then we've got our Thunderstone Rug, um, which is going to let you fly over all of those hazard effects. And then Village or Spoils. Discard one card with Thunderstone in its title to give this card the static keyword. That's interesting. So it could hang out. It's got a light. It's got plus two on the skill. It's got some value, so and it's just discard a card with Thunderstone in its title to make it static. So that's going to end up being a pretty decent treasure, I think. I like that one. All right, so then we got some legendary cards. What do we got? We got a Wish, because um, I think those come up as part of the prestige classes. Like you can get Wish there. Uh, let's see here. We've got the Immortals, which is another one that you can get. Uh, Monsters and Dungeon Rooms cannot destroy or discard the Immortals. So that's pretty nice. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, we got a lot of them. Seven, eight, eight Immortals. Cool. All right, so then what we end up with is randomizers. So I think I've got a whole set of randomizers here. So we can do a review of what we've got there. We've got our Durgan Soulbrand, Dwarf Cleric. We've got Reen Mandrox, which is our avian elf fighter. She's the one that wants you to have a variety of things in your deck. You've got him a granite sunder. So she's going to be the one. She's the pretty beefy fighter. I like her. Uh, Shakir the Sailor, uh, he's all about the treasure and the money. I like him. He's the one that's a lot of gold. He's got lots of value in him. Um, Sirach is the one that I think if you're going to be going uh, marketplace and village, he's going to really help you out in the village. Uh, yep, it says it in the text there. Maximizes your village phases, though not strong in battle. So uh, Then there's Shauna Hope Singer and... Let's see here. She is the one that uh, you benefit by having multiples of her, which is which is kind of interesting. Um, and then we get to go through all of our, so those are all of our heroes, and we have all of our village stuffs, which are our bag of gems, our spices, our thunderstone potions, our camels, our desert wolves, our mummify, the navigate the labyrinth spell, our open sesame spell, our summon help, some weapons, the avian bow, the kopesh, the scimitar, which I think is the winner. I'm, I'm liking that one the most. All right. So that's all of our stuffs that you can get. So we'll put our stuffs pile here. And then we've got, oh, there we go. Let's see here. Got some side quests, right? So here's our side quests. We've got a rebuild the roads. Which is reveal side quest, pay four, and discard the following as a village. So two food, two light, one or more heroes with combined. Oof. Then you get if revealed, discard one non starter card to gain the immortal legendary hero and draw it. Ooh, okay, so that's how you get your, your immortals out there, right? So all these immortals are going to help. You're going to get 
And that right there, you rebuild the roads, and it's going to bring their immortals in. Ooh, I like that. That's kind of rough, though. Heroes with combined 10, 10 skill is a little bit on the tough side, but maybe if you went with some of these the stronger ones down here, it wouldn't be too tough to reach that. So not a bad side quest. I got Living Legends. The side quest is worth 7 for each legendary hero you have. So if you're playing with the level 4 legendary heroes, excellent. If you're not, then it's not very good. All right. What else you got here? You got Recover the Wish. Before you battle a three monster, reveal the side quest to battle the top monster of the three monster deck instead. Ooh, that's... Wow, I'm not sure what to think about that. I think that would be a great one after you've played a certain set of monsters to know, or if you're facing a level three monster that's just horrible and you know you're not going to beat him and you'd be better off just taking on anything else, that might work. Uh, if you lose the above battle, turn this side quest face down. If you win the battle, you get wish. All right, so there's another way to get wish. All right, new town guards, reveal this side quest. If needed, when you buy a one hero from the guild quarter, place it under the side quest instead of in your discard pile. Oh, okay. If there are three plus heroes under the side quest, collect a shard when the game ends, and each turn you may use all or some of the text of one extra village location where your champion is not. So there's a use for as you as you level up heroes. Interesting. When you buy a one hero from the guild quarter, place it under the side quest instead of your discard pile. Huh. Interesting. Okay, I like that. All right. Next up, we've got a build aqueducts. To reveal the side quest, pay five gold and discard the following as a village. Two tokens two potion tokens, one or more combined cards with five plus magic. Seems a little bit rough, but what's it get you? If revealed, gain village ability. When the game ends, collect the side quests uh, bonus. And then as a village, you can gain one and one bread token. So you can get five and throughout the game, you're going to get more uh, Thunderstone shards and more bread. That's ah, okay. I don't know that I'm overall all Super impressed with that. That one looks pretty decent. Um, and then we've got, so we got a whole bunch of rebuilding stuff. Rebuild the grain silo. This is going to pay four, discard three bread as a village action. If revealed, then you, so that's going to seem like it's going to be pretty easy to get. If revealed after you buy a card from the marketplace, you may place it under here instead of your discard pile. Cards under here have their, ooh. Oh, their value doubled, and ooh, so this is going to be a nice one if you're playing with spices. You can stack your spices under there and potentially get some crazy results. That, that, ooh, that, that could be gross. And you might have to watch out for people that seem to be grabbing the spices. All right, rebuild the treasury. Reveal the side quest. Pay seven. Discard the following as a village. A treasure. Two worth of rogues and or wizards. Okay, that doesn't seem like that's all that tough. If revealed, gain this village ability. And when the game ends, collect the side quests victory points. So you're going to gain, give tre give one treasure the static keyword. Ah, so you're going to be able to let its treasure sit out there. Ah, that. Again, that's going to be another one that's probably... The value of it is going to depend upon what you bring out of the treasure stack, but that could be, there's some treasures in there that are really disgustingly powerful, so that's another hit or miss card. Could be really great, could be meh, we'll have to see. All right, so let's see, we've got some training guilds in there. We've got the clerics training guild, so as a spoils, level up one level cleric, or sorry, level up one cleric, paying the cost, so that way you can help level up your clerics like that. And I think there's a set for each of them. Let's make sure that they're all the same. So you've got your Clerics Training Guild. You have the Fighters Training Guild. Yep. And I think they're all the spoils actions. Yep, there's your Rogues Training Guild and your Wizards Training Guild. So you can kind of select 
which one you want to go after there and level them up in the dungeon. So, all right. And then our last thing is let's take a look at our big boss guardian. So we've got, uh, Amtifities. Am ah, someone's going to have to tell me how to pronounce that. Cause I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, but she is the wicked and she's got, uh, what is there? 10 plus three magic defense. For each of your wounds, destroy one Thunderstone shard. Ow. All right. But she's going to give you a treasure at the end. That's all right. So then we've got our level five, which we're going to step her up just a little bit. Oh, ooh, that's going to, for each of your, I think those are your disease cards. or your, I can't remember if that's disease or poison. Discard one non-wound card. So you're going to want to make sure that you're going in there purified. You're going to have need to go with your clerics having you cleaned up the good thing is she's not giving those to you i guess that's a bonus but uh yeah you definitely want to be cleaned up before you fight against her as i say that i wanted to look at yeah so one of the things as part of her stuff is drain life and negative energy is uh is gonna hit you with those so yuck all right and then our last one She's going to get another health and another defense against magic. And for each of your wounds, that looks similar. And for each of your others, discard a card. Oh, it's a random card. Oh, that's even worse. The other ones just get rid of a card. That one makes it random. Oh, wow. Yep. I'm going to need to be cleaned up to go against her. So, uh, all right. So, got it all laid out here. This is set number eight so expansion number eight here right let's see if we can get that there we go so vengeful sands quest expansion number eight i've got number nine i need to get out we'll go through the cards for number nine but uh that's everything that's in here i'm, I'm pretty happy with this set uh i like so i kind of like the the village aspect of this set it puts you a little bit more to village there's some cards in this set that look like you really need them to play together. Uh, there's some of the bows that like work best with avians, right? So if you don't have avians, if you're doing a full random set, and you don't have avians, you kind of lose a lot of the, the capability of things, right? So yeah, so the avian bow there, right? So if I've got that and I end up doing some randomizers and I don't get avians, then that's kind of a meh card. Um, I'd like to see a randomizer that make sure that those synergies like a digital randomizer to make sure that those synergies hit would be a really cool addition to have. So overall, pretty happy with this set, like stuff that does a little bit more in the village. Um, some of the abilities look a little bit annoying. There's some randomness in here. So depending upon which type of game of Thunderstone quest I'm looking to play, the, the more Euro type game or the more Ameritrash type game, it looks like depending upon which cards I choose, I can kind of direct which way I want to go in there. So I do kind of like that aspect too. So if you were somebody that was looking to buy a set to take you in one direction or the other, this one gives you the ability to do a little bit in, in both directions. Like you can, it could make both sides of those happy. So pretty pleased with this set. So next up is going to be number nine, which is over here. So set nine is going to be Clockwork Destiny. So we'll grab those cards out in the next episode of this. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Let me know what you think about these cards. Is there some that you think are like, ooh, that's really cool, or other ones you're like, man, I would totally never use that, or that is so annoying, I am never going to play with those cards. So let me know in the comments. Um, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.